The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Be on your guard, stay awake, because you never know when the time will come. It is like a man travelling abroad. He has gone from home and left his servants in charge, each with his own task. And he has told the doorkeeper to stay awake. So stay awake, because you do not know when the master of the house is coming. Evening, midnight, cockcrow, dawn. If he comes unexpectedly, he must not find you asleep. And what I say to you, I say to all, stay awake. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So once again, a very good morning to you, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. Okay, so we had a very long beginning part of the Mass. I'm sure you're all very tired already by now, and you're wondering what more is going to happen. So yes, there's much more that's going to happen. So Father will keep his homily short today to catch up with some time. So I took out the phone to see what time it is. All right, because there's another Mass after this. Huh? And as you all experienced this now, you know, the Tamil Mass ended a bit late because of they had the same thing that we were doing today. So anyhow, coming back to the homily. In the Gospel today, we are told to stay awake. Right? And we are told also that if he comes unexpectedly, he must not find you asleep. Okay, my dear brothers and sisters, does this mean that we have to, you know, burn the midnight oil, not studying, not doing work or something, but spending our whole time just praying? Is that what we are supposed to do? Surely not, right? And is there anybody doing this? I don't think so. Myself also, no. <laughs> if not, how? Sleep, my dear brothers and sisters, is something very important. Okay, definitely God is not telling us don't sleep. Spend all your time only praying. Today we're going to bless the meditation room. Huh? I hope nobody is going to go inside the room and sleep inside the room. You go there and pray. <laughs> but sleep also has its place huh, in our life. And you know, very often, a lot of the sins we are committing is because we didn't sleep enough. Then we are in a bad mood, we are grumpy, we are hot-tempered, we are grouchy, we are scolding everybody. Because didn't sleep enough. And this is a problem that our society now, a lot of us are facing. Because the demands of the world are so much, especially in the workplace and everything. You know, your boss is chasing after you, rushing this completion date and that completion date and this project and that project just to earn their money. And they give you something, of course, but they are taking away your life. Do you realize that? And don't even think that God is also going to do the same and tell you, don't sleep. You know the third commandment, thou shalt keep holy the Sabbath day, right? That is actually God's command to us to rest. Now when we think of that commandment, we might be thinking that, oh, that means I must go to church on Sunday. Uh, keep holy, the obligation day. So our catechumens, you know, being Catholic, you have to come, you know, to church every Sunday and for all the holy days of obligation. If not, as your catechist will teach you, you'll be breaking the third commandment of God. So already teaching them a bit. Third commandment of God, keep holy the Sabbath day. But do you know, every time you are overworking, you are not giving yourself enough time to rest, you are just, you know, absorbed with the things in the world, so busy, even no time to pray, but no time to rest. We are committing a sin. Do we know that? Hardly anyone will come in the confession and say, Father, I didn't sleep enough. Nobody. <laughs> they might tell you, I'm a lazy fellow. I'm not hardworking enough. But do we realize when we are abusing our body, not giving ourselves enough rest, we are not actually following God's plan for us. He did not create us to be this kind of machines that are running 24 hours. He wants us to rest. Now, we are entering into this Christmas season. All of you are going to get busy coming to the end of the year. Some will be baking cookies, making cakes. Others will be going out, buying decorations, cleaning the house. You're going to be so busy, 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 busy. 
But don't be so busy until you come for the Christmas midnight mass, you're so tired and then somebody in the car park annoys you and you fire the fellow off and then that's it, finish Christmas over. <laughs> happens, you know, I know, for all the big masses and all this, all kinds of nonsense happening in the car park. <laughs> yeah, then you'll come, you'll see some fellas, why this fellow black face, that fellow black face, luckily nobody with a black eye. <laughs> You see, when we abuse our body, when we don't give ourselves enough rest, we prepare ourselves to fall into sin. Yeah, so sometimes it's not that you don't love God, not that you are not trying to avoid temptation, you're just not resting enough. And for that, you're becoming a grouchy fella and with very sharp uh, thorns all over the place, basically crying out for help because you are also suffering. Yeah? So today, the Lord tells you to stay awake, but He's actually not telling you don't rest. So what does He mean when He says stay awake? Stay awake here means to be aware. To be aware of what is happening in your life. To be aware of where you are in your relationship with God. And to be aware that you are not living a wholesome and balanced life such that you have no time for family or no time for God, no time even for yourself. So today, as your first preparation for Advent, take a look at your own self, your own life, and ask yourself, am I really aware of what is going on in my life? Next question, am I aware of what is happening in my family? Am I aware of what is happening in my church community? Am I aware of what is happening to those who are with me? And when that awareness is there, we can finally, with our eyes open, really build our relationship with each other. And first of all, our relationship with God. Okay, so I hope you all got this point today. I've got to keep the homily short. Yeah, so got more points, but never mind, love. We have another time. You all are coming to Mass every Sunday, right? I'm sure some of you are tired of hearing me talking also all the time. I'm also tired. <laughs> of hearing myself because the number one person sometimes not enough rest is me <laughs> yes but i try to remain cheerful try to remain joyful but you know when there's time to sleep i'll go and sleep so very often i will not wake up for my morning prayers oh my lord jesus <laughs> okay but i try to make up for it later in the day but with just one hail mary and eh? hmm. I think that's not a very good way to make up for it. But anyhow, God is not so calculative, so don't worry. So my dear Catechumens, you are coming now and uh, experiencing our faith. Our God is not calculative. I want you to hear that. Simple teaching for you, without using any church language, because you are just starting. And our God loves you, and He wants you to be happy, and He wants you to rest. Simple enough to understand. And He doesn't want you to be His slave on your knees all the time praying only. No, that's not the idea. Yeah? He made you for many more things, but yes, He wants you to know Him and to love Him. And yes, you do need to spend time in prayer. But if you come to pray and you find you are falling asleep, so what must you do first? Go and sleep. Okay, but don't become a sleeping Catholic, huh? Uh, be an active Catholic, but make sure you get your rest, spend your time for prayer in God. And everybody will have cheerful, smiling faces for Christmas. Yeah? Not caught up so much in the things of this world, but really looking forward to welcoming Jesus in our life and being aware that He is in each one of us and in each one of our family members and welcoming them is welcoming our Lord.